hi everyone. Today we're going to take a look at this remote controlled power socket that I got from eBay for just five US dollars and that included free worldwide shipping. The idea is that you plug this into the wall, then you plug anything you want into here. It could be a lamp, it could be a TV, anything at all, and then you can turn it on and off remotely using this infrared remote control. Now, although I've been quite happy with this, I'm not going to recommend it and the reason is that it's five US dollars. Do you really trust this thing? There's no like safety markings as far as I can see, so it hasn't necessarily met the requirements you would find in some countries like the UK, the US, and you know some other countries. So uh, I'm not going to say I'm going to recommend it, but I'm also not not recommending it. Basically, take your own chances. But let's actually take a look at how this thing works. Let me zoom out and show you. So let's imagine I have this fan, which is really hard to reach. I can plug it into this remote controlled socket and I can plug this into the wall. In this case, I'm gonna plug it into an extension, but you get the idea. So once I plug it in, I can turn it on and off using this remote. So let's give it a go. Now, aside from hearing the fan starting and stopping, you can probably hear the relay inside. Let me hold it closer. Hopefully you can hear that on camera, there's a physical switching relay inside and that's what's flicking on and off the power of this fan. Now what you might have noticed, those with good eyes, is not only do we have this universal socket on the front, we also have a socket on the side and another socket here. So you can actually plug three devices into this. Now according to the ratings on the back, it's good for 10 amp, 250 volts. But then here it says 500 watts, so it doesn't quite add up, but I would assume 500 watts is the correct answer since it's much lower. Now, would I recommend putting 500 watts through this? Probably not, but in reality, most people are going to be connecting like 30 watt televisions or 50 watt fans. They're not going to be connecting 500 watt loads, so I don't think anyone really has to worry about that. But just for fun, let's connect our fan on the side and then this lamp holder on the front using a UK plug, British plug. So there we go, fan on the side, this lamp on the front, and this is a 120 watt lamp. And instead of plugging it straight into here, I'm gonna plug it into my watt meter so that you can see the load as it's turning on. So let me connect this. Now I don't know how well the camera's showing this. Let me see, there you go. So you can see that even when it's doing nothing, it's just sitting there doing nothing, it's still consuming around one watt of electricity. So it does consume a little bit of power even when it's not doing anything. But if we turn on our load using the remote, you can see the fan has come on and the lamp has come on and it's currently consuming around 129 watts. And I'm actually gonna leave this running for just a couple of minutes and then fill this and see if I can feel any warmth coming out of the adapter. So it's been a couple of minutes, let me turn this off and disconnect it and see if I can feel any heat in this. Nope, I'm not feeling any warmth there at all. And that was a, let me just feel this bulb, it's not too hot. That was a 120 watt light bulb and around, well, combined it was, you saw on here, around 130 watt load for a couple of minutes. So there you go, you get the idea of it. Let's open this up and take a look inside. So there's three screws to remove. One of them is behind the sticker, but I've already pierced through that. So there we go. If we look at this, you can see the same metal is used for the front socket and the two side sockets. It's just bent in the correct pattern so that it can service all three sockets using just the same bits of metal. Now it's not the best arrangement. You can see that the metal's not that thick and that's how they've kind of, well, they've done a pretty poor job of soldering the wire on there. Same with this one down here. It's not ideal, but it works. So that's something. Now at first glance, I would assume this is a capacitive dropper power supply. We've got the AC coming in, big capacitor, four diodes, which is obviously a full wave bridge rectifier. And then I looked on the markings on these chips. One of them is an E squared PROM, which I assume is perhaps holding the code for the remote control, the infrared remote. And the other chip, I don't know, it doesn't have any marking on, it's been scrubbed but I assume it's just some kind of simple microcontroller that's listening for the remote control and then triggering this relay here. And I'll zoom in on the relay so you can have a better look at the markings. And I'll also show you the rest of the board just in case you want to have a better look at that. So it's pretty much what you'd expect. And honestly, looking at it, apart from like how poor this is, it all seems pretty much okay. I'm still a little bit hesitant because, you know, anything this cheap from China, you have to be a little bit worried about plugging it into your wall. 
but it actually seems okay to me. Anyway, let me put this back together. So there you go, it's a simple device, but it works quite well. Turn it on and off as you want. I wouldn't necessarily trust this plugged into my wall 24 seven unattended, but there are definitely times when I think this come in useful. And the remote is pretty good actually, it doesn't have to be directly aimed at it, it's still pretty good. Like if I point it at the wall over there, you can see that it still worked, you know, the signal bounces around a bit. So yeah, I actually like it. Um, it's cheap and it works and it seems kind of okay on the inside. So if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.